Okay, we're going to talk about the events leading up to the American Revolution. So there's some th different th things we need to talk about before we get into the American Revolution. First of which is something called the French and Indian War. So we're going to analyze the importance of the Albany Plan uh, of Union and the causes and effects of the French and Indian War. So, if we take a look at now, okay, which European countries were competing for land in North America? You see here in the orange, that says British, prior to 1755. Okay, yellow is British after 1763. The green is French after 1763. And Spanish is in the purple. So this war is uh, really the first world war if you want to look at it that way it's happening all over the world places like india europe and in the new world and, and, and um, the colonies we call it the french and indian war but it was between to the two major powers um, uh, england and france and others so you have great britain france and spain are all competing for land in north america Okay, the Albany Plan of Union proposed by a young Benjamin Franklin and Massachusetts Governor Thomas Hutchinson called for the colonial unity in order to face the coming war with France. So you see the snake here, he is severed, and it says, join or die. This is a, a political cartoon sketch from Ben Franklin. Okay, the Albany Plan of Union called for the Grand Council representatives from each colony. Okay, the Grand Colony would do this, make laws, raise taxes, defend the colonies, and none of the colonies approved the plan out of fear of losing power. So, Brent Franklin's talking about uniting the colonies, uh, but that was going to be a little easier said than done. Okay, the Albany Plan of Union set an example that would later be followed by such gatherings as the First and Second Continental Congress. Okay, the French and Indian War. Okay, causes. Britain began to compete with France over fur trade in the Ohio River Valleys. So the St. Lawrence Seaway down into the Ohio River, this whole part uh, here of the eastern United States current. Okay, alliances. A formal agreement by two or more nations is an alliance to act together in a cause. So France was allied with Spain. And these two uh, Native American um, uh, tribes, and over here you had Great Britain, were allied with their Native American tribes. So it becomes known as the French and Indian War, but also Native Americans fought on the side of the British as well. Um, <clears throat> so some tribes didn't agree with other ones, so they joined whatever would probably best uh, benefit them. Uh, some tribes benefited more from France, some tribes benefited more from Great Britain. Okay, so here's kind of a before and after. So this whole area east of the Appalachian Mountains, modern day Illinois, Michigan, the upper Midwest, uh, a lot of Canada, was French. And you see a lot of French heritage, uh, a lot of towns uh, throughout uh, this part of the country, like Vincennes, Indiana, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, this all had New Orleans, this all had French influence, but after this war, Britain's going to gain control of most of North America, and they're going to get all this land east of the Appalachian Mountains, so it's going to become British. So Britain wins the war. So the Treaty of Paris was signed in 1763, ending the war. Britain gains Canada, most of Canada, and the, uh, all the French land east of the Mississippi River. Okay, Spain gained all of French land west of the Mississippi River. Spain gave up Florida to Britain. And those are your results there. So uh, France gets the raw end of the deal here. They uh, lose a lot, a lot of land, and Britain gains a lot of territory. And this will lead up to things with the colonies.